Asia Pacific, Middle East and North African regions. Also available on these digital platforms across the world. We on World is One. Good evening, America. You're watching World DNA with me, Raisha Seg. And I'm Haim Korsaran. On the show today, the two suspects in the Russia terror attack where more than 130 people have been people died have been identified and they will be facing life imprisonment with one of them pleading guilty on all counts. Russian President Vladimir Putin has said that the suspects arrested were planning to flee into Ukraine. And meanwhile, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has said that Kyiv had nothing to do with the attack and call the incident a Russian provocation. On the show, of course, we'll be exploring the implications of this. Absolutely. Also on World DNA Today, Israel has informed the United Nations that it will no longer approve UNRWA food convoys to the north of Gaza, where 70% of people face food scarcity and are on the brink of famine. While on the other hand, mediation efforts to end bloodshed in Gaza, that appears to be struggling as of now, with reports suggesting that the Israeli negotiators have rejected the latest proposals for a ceasefire. All that and a lot more on World DNA this morning, but first, the headlines. Russia prosecutes four individuals in the concert hall terror case, sends them on a pre-trial custody until the 22nd of May. The deadly terror attack outside of Moscow on Friday, it has so far claimed 137 lives. The French government has raised its terror alert warning to the highest level. The decision comes after a meeting between French President Emmanuel Macron and senior security officials following the deadly attack in Russia. Israeli forces besieged two more hospitals in Gaza following their intense operation at Gaza's Al Shifa Hospital that led to heavy casualties. Israel claims to have taken 480 militants into custody during its raid at Al Shifa Hospital. India's ruling Bharatiya Janata Party releases its fifth list of contestants for the forthcoming parliamentary elections at the Kangnara North to contest for Himachal Pradesh the Monday seat. Indians around the world are celebrating Holi, the festival of colours. The festival marks the arrival of spring season and has its roots in Hindu faith. Sunday celebrated around the world commemorating Jesus Christ's triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Pope Francis' health remains a concern as he skips the reading of homely.
And Mumbai Indians maintain their tradition of losing their opening match of the IPL since 2012 as the five-time champions suffer a six-round defeat at the hands of Gujarat Titans in Ahmedabad. Saiki Shaw will allow it to bounce, but it has time. Our top focus in World DNA right now. Three of the four suspects have been charged with carrying out the concert hall attack in Moscow that killed more than 130 people. Right, Raisha. All three have admitted their guilt for the attack in a Russian court. The court ruled for the men to be held in pre-trial custody until the 22nd of May. All four of them are citizens of Tajikistan. Well, Moscow's Basmani District Court formally charged four suspects aged 32, 30, 19 and 25 with committing a group terrorist attack. The offence carries a maximum sentence of life imprisonment out of the four, Mirzoyev, Racha, Bali, Zoda and Faridouni all admitted guilt after being charged. The four, that is Faizov, was brought to court directly from a hospital in a wheelchair and sat in the dock with his eyes closed throughout the proceedings. He was attended by medics while in court where he wore a hospital gown and trousers and was seen with multiple cuts. The three suspects appeared in court heavily bruised with swollen faces. Russian media reports said that they were tortured during interrogation by the security services. Now the order came as Russia observed a national day of mourning on the 25th, pardon me, that's the 24th of March, following the raid on the suburban Crocus City Hall concert venue that killed at least 137 people. The attack, which has been claimed by an affiliate of the Islamic State group, is the deadliest on Russian soil in years. Well, of course, we'll continue to bring you all the developments on that front. Let's shift our focus to now. France's government, it's increased its security alert warning to the highest level after the deadly attack at the Russian concert hall. Right, Hame. Now, the announcement came after French President Emmanuel Macron held an emergency security meeting. Well, Prime Minister Gabriel Attal said in a post on X that this decision, which comes months before Paris hosts the Olympic Games, was taken in light of the Islamic State claiming the responsibility for the attack and the threats weighing on the country. France's terror alert system has three levels and the highest level is activated in the wake of the attack in France or abroad when a threat is of one is considered to be imminent. It allows for exceptional security measures such as stepped up patrols by armed forces in public places like train stations, airports, religious sites as well. Now, France has repeatedly been hit by deadly terror attacks in the past as well, including the Bataclan Concert Hall massacre in 2015, in which extremists opened fire on concert goers and held hostages for hours. The country was already on high security alert ahead of the Paris Games and Paralympics this year, which are expected to draw millions of visitors to the country. And security concerns are notably high for the exceptional opening ceremony on July 26th. Of course, this will involve boats riding along the Seine River and huge crowds watching from the embankments. Also on Sunday, the UAE illuminated its iconic landmarks with colors of Russian flag. And this was, of course, to pay homage to the victims of the Moscow terror attack that killed more than 130 people. Take a look.
of course, with that, Russia, it has launched a massive missile attack on Ukraine. It is the third such attack in the past four days. And Poland's military says a Russian missile fired at Ukraine had briefly entered its airspace as well. Warsaw has now placed their forces in heightened readiness. At 4.43 a.m., one of the Russian missiles violated Polish airspace. The object entered Polish airspace over the village of Osado, Lubelski administrative district, and was over the territory of our country for 39 seconds. It went around 1,000 to 2,000 meters into our country. Now, the report came after Ukrainian officials said Russia had launched about 20 missiles and seven Shahed attack drones targeting the western Ukrainian region of Lviv, which is near the Polish border. There were also multiple explosions that were reported in the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv. The visuals on your screen right now are of a Russian KH-55 cruise missile. Remnants of this missile was found in a park in Kyiv after it was intercepted during airstrikes. The strikes prompted residents to seek shelter in subway stations as sirens sounded across darkened neighborhoods in Ukraine. Well, Ukraine's Air Force said that the defense systems destroyed 43 Russia-launched air weapons, including 18 missiles and 25 drones. Now, there have been multiple intrusions into Polish airspace since Russia invaded Ukraine in February 2022. The last time Russia violated Poland's airspace was in December 2023. Now, the Polish military said at that time that an importing here unidentified airborne object had entered its airspace from Ukrainian territory. And later, Poland's most senior military officer said that all indications suggested it was a Russian missile. Well, moving on now, the Palestinian Red Crescent says that Israeli forces have surrounded two more hospitals in the Gaza Strip. And the aid agency has claimed that one of its staff was killed when Israeli tanks suddenly pushed back into areas around hospitals in Gaza's Khan Yunus. Palestinian agency it said that currently Al-Amal Hospital and Nasser Hospital in southern Gaza are under the grip of the IDF. The agency also claims that Israeli forces are demanding complete evacuation of staff, patients and displaced people from Al-Amal's premises. Israeli military said its forces were hitting infrastructure in Khan Yunus, which are used as lairs for numerous militants. Israel has repeatedly claimed that Hamas is using Gaza hospital to harbor weapons. Hamas denies using hospitals for military ends and accuses Israel of war crimes against civilian targets. Still now, Israel asserts that it has captured 480 militants in continued clashes at Gaza's main Al-Shifa hospital. Al-Shifa is one of the few healthcare facilities that is partially operational in North Gaza. It is housing over 80% of Palestinians who are displaced due to the ongoing war. In other global news, Haim, more than 280 students abducted by gunmen from a school in Nigeria earlier this month, they've now been released. Right, Nigerian officials said that the school-going children were unharmed and were released days before the ransom deadline. The gunmen carried out the kidnapping on the 7th of March in the town of Kuriga in northwestern Kaduna state. It was the first mass kidnapping in the country. Since 2021, when over 150 students were kidnapped from a secondary school. Now, the extremist group Boko Haram was the first to carry out kidnappings from schools in Nigeria. The most notable one being the 2014 kidnapping of 276 students from a girls' school in Chibok in northeastern Borno state. Some of those girls were not released. 
But since then, criminal gangs with no ideological affiliation have largely followed suit seeking financial ransoms. Kaduna State Governor Ubasani said the country's national security advisor had coordinated the release of the students, but he did not provide further details. Last week, the gunman demanded a ransom equal to about $690,000 in exchange for the release of the students and staff. The government said it would not pay any ransom after doing so was illegally banned in 2022. And over to elections in Africa, Senegal, 19 contestants are vying to replace President Macky Sall. Who is stepping down after a second term marked by violent unrest over the prosecution of opposition leader Usman Sonko. Basira Diomai Fay is backed by firebrand opposition leader Osman Sonko, who was disqualified from the race because of a defamation conviction. Focus of Faye's manifesto is to bring the West African bloc ECOWAS closer. campagne <laughs> Pour projet. The outgoing president, Mackie Sol, has vowed to peacefully hand over office to his successor. This comes after the country's top court blocked his attempts to delay the elections for 10 months. At least 19 candidates are vying to replace President Saul. Amongst those, two tax inspectors have emerged as contending frontrunners. The contestant from Senegal's ruling party, Amdao Ba, is also the former prime minister of the country. He lashed out at the opposition during his campaign, saying that their proposals to introduce a national currency can discourage the investors. And the emergency, from my point of view in Senegal, is not to create a currency. I don't think these people even know the process involved in issuing money. Time to change all the coins in circulation. It will be at the end of the mandate. The country's urgent needs lie elsewhere. Over 7.3 million people are eligible to cast their vote and the provisional results are expected to be announced on the 26th of March. Marquis Saul is leaving over a drop in popularity, which was worsened amid his attempts to stall elections. The move arose amid allegations of authoritarian rule by Saul. Moving on now. Simon Harris is expected to become the new leader of Angel. Harris, who is currently Ireland's Minister for Further and Higher Education, was the only candidate to seek the party leadership. Right, him, and he is now set to replace Leo Varadkar, who last Wednesday announced his, that he was stepping down as the party leader and as the Prime Minister of Ireland. 37-year-old Harris is best known for his initial response to COVID-19 and will be declared the new leader of the centre-right party later on. Meanwhile, he will later address the members at an event in the Irish Midlands town of Athlone. Harris will then be voted in as Ireland's youngest ever Prime Minister. Shift our focus now. Pope Francis unexpectedly skips homily during Palm Sunday Mass service at the Vatican. 
Friday and the service marks the most sacred week in the church's calendar as Christians around the world prepare to celebrate Easter. And his decision to skip the homely was a surprise for many. Right, and hobbled by bad knees and persistent respiratory problems, Francis, Pope Francis also did not participate in the procession of the cardinals at the start of the mass. Instead, the 87-year-old blessed the palm fronds and olive branches carried by the faithful from the altar. The Vatican gave no immediate explanation as to why the Pope skipped the homily. Vatican television coverage showed only the crowd for a few minutes instead of a close-up of the Pope. An announcer on Vatican Radio then said that the Pope had decided to not read the homily. The Pope, dressed in red vestments, continued presiding reading parts of the Mass. Pope Francis's choice to skip the speech, it's raised concerns about the Pope's health. In recent years, he has undergone an intestinal surgery and following the service, he condemned the vile concert hall shooting in Moscow. Francis told the crowd that he was praying for the victims of the terrorist attack in Russia. He also asked for people to pray for the martyred in Ukraine and people of Gaza. I assure my prayers for the victims of the wild terrorist attack carried out last night in Moscow. May the Lord welcome them in his peace and comfort their families. Let's not forget the martyred Ukraine and we also think of Gaza, which is suffering so much and of so many other places of war. Vatican officials estimate some 25,000 people attended the mass. Palm Sunday kicks off a busy week for Francis leading up to Easter Sunday when the faithful commemorate the resurrection of Christ. Well, Him Palm Sunday was celebrated on the 24th of March around the globe. Right, it honors the Christian belief in the triumphant arrival of Jesus into Jerusalem as described in the Bible where he was met by joyful crowds waving palm branches that they had laid out on the ground for him. Take a look at these visuals. <laughs> Of course, uh, the Hindu community across India and in fact across the globe are celebrating Holi. That's the festival of colors. Right, Hem. Holi is one of India's biggest festivals in Hindu tradition. This festival of colors marks the victory of good over evil and celebrates the love shared by Lord Krishna and Radha. Let's now give you a glimpse of some of the celebrations taking place in India and around the world as well. All right, starting in India's hilly state of Himachal Pradesh, where residents stepped out of their homes to kick-start holy celebrations. In the holy city of Mathura, thousands of devotees took to the streets, drenching themselves in colour and religious fervour. Meanwhile, the trans community in eastern Kolkata voiced their opinion for equal rights and celebrated the festival by smearing colors and distributing sweets among each other. Later in the day, heaps of log, heaps of wood was burnt as part of the ritual, which is called Holika Dahan, during which a holy fire it is worshipped as a symbol of victory of good over evil. 
Early on Sunday, the streets of Vrindavan were also painted with colors and our correspondent Johan Kastel went to Prem Mandir in the state of Uttar Pradesh and has sent us this report from there. Take a look. We are outside of the Prem Mandir in Vrindavan right now. This temple is quite new. It was finished only in 2012 and there are lots of people here celebrating Holi. In fact, it's uh, hard not to inhale the colors of this festival today. In fact, the entire road is so filled with holy colors that you're stepping in a sea of purple. It is quite hectic here today. What can we say? Happy And of course, no shortage of cross-border festivities as the Hindu community in the Pakistan city of Karachi also celebrated Holi with much fanfare and enthusiasm. In India's neighboring country of Nepal, thousands of people gathered at the heart of Kathmandu to celebrate Holi. This occasion also marks the advent of spring in Nepal. And it's now time for a quick short break. And of course, don't go anywhere. We'll be back with lots more. India's ruling Bharatiya Janata Party has released its fifth list of candidates for general elections. Stay tuned for all the updates on that front. Also on the other side of this short break, from Shole to Silsila to Bhagwan, Bollywood has had a tradition of celebrating Holi in the most boisterous fashion with songs that are now cult classics. We'll get you all of that right after this very short break. India's global voice, the channel that brings you the biggest stories from across the world through India's lens. Now available in more than 190 countries worldwide, because we believe that the world is one. Watch us in Africa, Europe, USA and Canada, South America, Asia Pacific, Middle East and North African regions. Also available on these digital platforms across the world. We on. World is one. Ready to dive into your daily dose of news? Bringing you what's trending in the West and all that's setting trends in the East. And all of this served up with a side of insightful banter. We don't just bring you the latest stories. We bring you your talking points for the day. And while you do that, from the busy streets of New York, I will provide you with deeper insights on the developments through the course of the day in the U.S. From New York, we get you to the sandy shores of Durban, where I'll bring you all the glitz, glam and happenings from the world of showbiz. Welcome to the Eras Tour. And I will be here at the Vion headquarters, getting you all the action from the universe of sport. All that you need to know about your favorite teams and players, right here. The show that keeps you ahead of the global curve. A conversation you'd want to be a part of. A place where news becomes an engaging exchange. We bring you stories that impact your present. This is World DNA. Join the conversation.
Welcome back to World DNA. Thank you so much for staying with us. Lots lined up for you on this side of the break as well. Let's start by looking at the headlines first. Russia prosecutes four individuals in the concert hall terror case and sends them on a pre-trial custody until May 22nd. The deadly terror attack outside of Moscow on Friday has so far claimed 137 lives. The French government has raised its terror alert warning to the highest level. The decision comes after a meeting between President Emmanuel Macron and senior security officials following the deadly attack in Russia. Israeli forces besieged two more hospitals in Gaza following their intense operation at Gaza's Al-Shifa hospital that led to heavy casualties. Israel claims to have taken 480 militants into custody during its raid at Gaza's largest hospital. Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Galan says his visit to Washington this week would focus on maintaining Israel's military superiority in West Asia as fighting rages on in Gaza. India's ruling Bharatiya Janata Party releases its fifth list of contestants for the forthcoming parliamentary elections. At the Kangnara North to contest from Himachal Pradesh, the Mandi seat. Indians around the world are celebrating Holi, the festival of colors. The festival marks the arrival of the spring season and has its roots in Hindu faith. Palm Sunday celebrated around the world, commemorating Jesus Christ's triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Pope Francis' health remains a concern as he skips the reading of home. And the Mumbai Indians maintain their tradition of losing their opening match of the IPL since 2012 as the five-time champions suffer a six-run defeat at the hands of Gujarat Titans in Ahmedabad. Well, hey, in India, the ruling Bharatiya Janata Party has released its fifth list of contestants for the upcoming elections. Now, this list, it has 111 candidates, popular film actor, Kangna Ranaut, former Congress MP, industrialist Naveen Jindal, former Judge Abhijit, and actor Arun Govil were among the prominent names in this list. 
Kangana Ranaut has been fielded from the Mandi seat in Himachal Pradesh, the place where she grew up. Meanwhile, steel tycoon Jindal has been given a ticket from the Kurukshetra seat in Haryana, a seat he held for two terms while he was a member of the Congress party. Actor Arun Govil, who played the role of Lord Ram in the popular TV series Ramayana, is going to contest from the Meerut Lok Sabha seat. And former Calcutta High Court Judge Abhijit Gangopadhyay has been fielded from the Tamluk seat in West Bengal. The list also includes the names of the sister-in-law of former Chief Minister Heyman Surain, former Jharkhand Mukti Morcha MLA Sita Surain will fight from the Dumka constituency. Now this list is of course generating a lot of interest given the candidates who have been omitted this time. Varun Gandhi has been dropped from the Uttar Pradesh Pilavit constituency while his mother Menika Gandhi has retained the Sultanpur seat. The mother-son duo are members of the Nehru Gandhi family who have been members of the BJP for decades. And the BJP has also dropped former Union Minister Anant Kumar Hegde from the Uttra Kannada constituency. Similarly, Union Minister Ashwini Chaube has been dropped. And former Chief of Army Staff VK Singh has been relieved from the Ghaziabad constituency. And as Jammu and Kashmir gears up for elections, the Election Commission recently said that women will comprise around 49% of voters in the Union Territory. And this uh, fact reflects the huge role of women in deciding the political area of the Union Territory and not just as voters but also as political leaders in their own right. Our next report tells you more. <music> Of about 8.6 million eligible voters in Jammu and Kashmir, some 4.2 million are women. That's about 49% of the electorate. Which translates into a huge responsibility on women to elect the right people to take Jammu and Kashmir into the future. Political parties are gearing up to woo women voters in a big way. They will take a 360 degree view of the whole thing. These pink boots, red boots, green boots, this is token representation. Is it easy for women to pick up politics as a career? The honest answer is no, it is not. Uh, you are character assassinated. Your abilities are always questioned. Your dressing, your um, what you're wearing, what you're saying, that gets more attention than what you're, what you're doing. I'm very thankful to my political party, the National Conference, that stood by me like a rock. And it has ensured that no matter what kind of attacks women politicians face outside, we are protected inside the party. So that has definitely been the silver lining. Representation of women in assembly elections in Jammu and Kashmir has always been very low. In the 2014 assembly elections, out of 831 candidates, only 28 were female contestants. Jammu and Kashmir has had only one female chief minister, Mehbooba Mufti. Women politicians have expressed happiness that with a 49% strong vote base, women's rights will be high on the agenda of political groups. Many have stepped up initiatives to invite young women to join politics, both to change the political scenario and help women in general. In uh, old times was that only men were given the right to like go out of the house and vote. But uh, the, with the passing of the time, with the changes that are like uh, happening around the world and ha happening around Kashmir, uh, I think uh, this, uh, you know, this is going to bring a big revolution to the society. I'm really happy about it that, you know, we women are uh, coming out of our homes and we are going to the uh, polling booths for uh, uh, choosing and contributing uh, to our society, choosing what is right for us, choosing uh, what would be beneficial for us as a society. 
Jammu and Kashmir will go to parliamentary elections in the first five phases. The Supreme Court has asked the government to hold assembly elections in the Union Territory before September 2024. As Jammu and Kashmir gears up for both parliamentary as well as assembly elections this year, the women voter percentage is around 49%, which means that the women will have a major decision-making power to decide on the political landscape of Jammu and Kashmir. And that's not it. There are many women joining political parties to contest the elections as well. With video journalist Feroz Idris Loan for Vion World is One. Right, let's have a look at all the news from the world of technology. According to a study by Macro Polo, a think tank run by the Paulson Institute in the United States, China is the biggest producer of a talent of AI talent in the world. Well, according to this report, China generates almost half of the world's top AI researchers. The report indicates that the US led that the United States lead, pardon me, has begun to slip. And according to a 2021 report, US it produced over 59% of the world's top AI talent. However, as per the latest report, that suggests that the US numbers have fallen to 42%. The report also suggests that Chinese researchers who are working in the United States make up 38% of total AI researchers in the United States. Now, what if we tell you in few years you can get to know how long you will live? Sounds bizarre, right? That's exactly what Danish researchers are aiming. Researchers in Denmark are harnessing AI technology and data from millions of people to help anticipate the stages of an individual's life. The AI tool uses a process similar to ChatGPT. However, the tool will analyze various stages of life variables such as birth, education, social benefits and even work schedule. Meanwhile, researchers are hopeful the algorithm could also help predict infertility, obesity and even cancer in the future. Well, if you are a fan of watching videos on YouTube, this story is for you. According to a report by Forbes, Federal Bureau of Investigation, commonly known as FBI, it has asked Google to share names, addresses, telephone numbers and user activity of the accounts that watched certain YouTube videos last year between January 1st and January 8th. As per reports, undercover investigators sent public YouTube tutorial links to a suspected cryptocurrency launderer under the username Elon Musk. These videos contain tutorials on how to use drones and augmented reality software for mapping. The video in question has garnered more than 30,000 views. In these viewers in the FBI are seeking information. Right now, it is not clear whether Google has shared the information or not. All right, on to all the developments from the world of business now. From India to Europe, authorities are tightening regulations, wielding legal tools to dismantle the monopolies that are held by digital giants. That's Google, Apple and Amazon. Right, the next report uh, tells you more. Take a look. The dominance of major technology companies is facing increased scrutiny around the world. In India, a draft law proposes to regulate the digital market aiming to prevent anti-competitive practices like self-preferencing and manipulation of search rankings. This would apply to companies with a significant user base exceeding 45 million monthly active users and 10,000 yearly business users. Meanwhile, the European Union has implemented the Digital Markets Act targeting gatekeeper platforms like X, Google, Apple and Amazon. This act prohibits these companies from hindering competition and favoring their own services. Non-compliance can result in hefty fines. The United States is also taking action. The Department of Justice has filed a lawsuit against Google's advertising business, alleging anti-competitive practices in acquiring rivals and influencing publishers and advertisers. 
Additionally, the Federal Trade Commission is challenging Amazon's dominance in the online retail market, accusing them of using practices that harm competition. In Australia, a landmark case pits Epic Games against Apple. Epic argues that Apple's control over app stores and its 30-person commission stifles competition. This case could have significant implications for app store practices globally. These legal battles and regulatory actions highlight growing concerns about the power and influence of big tech companies. Governments and regulators are seeking to create a more level playing field for competition and protect consumer interests. While the outcome of some legal cases like Meta's dismissed antitrust lawsuit remains to be seen, the overall trend suggests a stricter regulatory environment for big tech. Beirport, we on World is One. Meanwhile, the IMF is now urging China to shift its economic focus towards domestic consumption. They believe that this strategy, it could add $3.5 trillion to China's economy, and that's over the next 15 years. And this comes as China faces a slowdown in foreign investment with a nearly 20% drop in inflows during the first two months of 2024. Well, China is currently uh, grappling with several economic problems and headwinds, including a property market crisis, local government debt and sluggish consumer spending. The IMF argues that a more consumer-driven approach could provide a much-needed boost to the world's second-largest economy. In an attempt to reassure investors, China held its annual development forum in Beijing. Premier Li Xiang pledged to address concerns and create a more stable environment for foreign companies. This comes amid rising capital flight with overseas firms expressing anxieties about the business climate and economic recovery. The forum saw participation from global CEOs like Apple's Tim Cook, who reaffirmed his company's commitment to China. China is taking concrete steps to woo back investors. Premier Li Xiang announced a new policy package that included expanded market access for foreign firms, pilot programs to encourage investment in science and technology, and a $140 billion plan to issue ultra-long bonds to stimulate investment and stabilize growth. Now, it will be interesting to see how this helps China regain control over its tumbling economy. Well, Haim, over to some cricket action now. Nicholas Puran's unbeaten 64-run knock went in vain as Rajasthan Royals began the Indian Premier League campaign with a 20-run win over Lucknow Super Giants. Now, electing to bat first on a flat, dry wicket, Rajasthan Royals kicked off the proceedings with the dynamic duo of Joss 